As some of you may know, my name's Ishan and I'm a first year medical student at UCL. And in this video, I want to talk about how I think I got in and my application timeline. Now, before I start, I just want to quickly mention if there's a particular part of my application that you're interested in, feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps below. But without further ado, I'm going to get straight into the timeline, starting with my extracurriculars. So I think everyone's extracurriculars, mine included, start well before you even decide to do medicine, which is just doing the activities that you would be doing anyway. So for example, I played badminton and coached badminton. I was volunteering at a charity. I was doing these things anyway. And this is just something you have to be able to talk about in your interviews or in your personal statement in a way that is relevant to medicine. So for example, because I played badminton, I could say this helps me have a nice work-life balance. Or if I coach badminton, I can say this helps me build a rapport with the kids that come to play. So the point I'm trying to make here is everything you do adds to your character and adds to the interesting person and unique person that you are. And that's what we're trying to show to the interviewers, to the university itself. And I think that's what's really important for UCL as well, because you want to show that you're an all rounded person, not someone who's only interested in medicine and academics. OK, next thing, supercurriculars. Now, what exactly are supercurriculars? So supercurriculars are any extra work that you're doing that is related to the degree. So extracurriculars are stuff that you just do for fun outside. Supercurriculars will be more honed in and specific to medicine itself. So for example, any work experience, an essay you're writing, an article you've read, a podcast you've listened to, anything like that counts as supercurricular. So what did I do for my supercurriculars? Now I did a bunch of stuff and I wrote about most of it in my personal statement, but some of the ones that were really highlights to me were Surgeons at the Edge of Life, which is a brilliant documentary on BBC iPlayer. So like, please go watch it if you're interested in medicine, surgery, anything like that. So I talked about that and how the surgeon like expertly removes this like cavernoma from a patient's spinal cord. I found that really, really fascinating. And stuff like that shows that I'm interested in medicine and I'm able to talk about it. And then I also linked that in with a book I read, which was Complications by Atul Gawande, which is um, a book about how like surgery and medicine can go wrong. So I was able to discuss that quite nicely and those things linked together. Then the next thing I talked about was this online course on chemotherapy I did, which was on FutureLearn, which is a great website to find online courses. And then I linked this in with the EPQ that I did on lung cancer and chemotherapy as a treatment for lung cancer. I also talked about an essay about like the history of cancer research as well. And then finally, I talked about COVID and COVID vaccination and how I wrote an essay about that, how I had a podcast episode on that. And then finally, how I volunteered at a COVID-19 vaccination clinic. And all of these experiences, if you can see, are like little bubbles that can all come together and be related to each other. And this is something to really think about when you're doing these supercurricular activities, where you try and group the activities that you're doing into themes. And then that way, when you start talking about stuff, you're not only saying, oh, I read this book, but you're able to say, well, I read this book and I thought about this from it. But then I also listen to this podcast which had a different view and my view is so and so and that way you're starting to think critically about medicine even before like you've got in and that's just brilliant okay so that was the extracurriculars and supercurriculars that i did throughout year 12 and i ended up using them in my personal statement and then talking about them at interview so now reaching the end of year 12 i had my ucas predicted grade exams i'm sure you all have something similar and these decide the predicted grades that go to your university so they're important exams you need to smash them and the best way to do that, in my opinion, was doing practice papers, past questions and reading the mark schemes and trying to learn the mark schemes. The more practice you do and the more you try and analyse these mark schemes, the better you're going to do. I'm going to make a video like properly about like A levels and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that. But honestly, just doing well in these predicted grade exams is important. So now once these exams were over, I had a little bit of school left and then it was summer. So summer, I started off by literally just relaxing for the first two weeks. And this relaxation period is so important. You need to just chill out and like take it easy because you've got a long year ahead of you. And it's important to re-energize before you start getting into that. Once I'd re-energized and once I've had this break, it was UCAT prep time. Now, I'm not going to talk really, really in depth about UCAT because this is a UCL and how I got into UCL video. And UCL is a BMAT university. But just to quickly recap UCAT period over the summer holidays, six to eight weeks of revision. I just sat there, did loads and loads of past questions and mock papers. And then finally did my UCAT at the end of August. I got 2950 band two for anyone that's interested. And then summer was over and it was time to get back into school, finish off my personal statement and then do BMAT prep. So an important thing about personal statement, it is going to be scrapped in 2024, 2025, but I believe this year they're going to continue it. So some of the things that I suggest is make sure it flows 
by putting all the elements of your personal statement into categories. So I had like different paragraphs relating to different themes like COVID, like my work experience and surgery, etc, etc. So try and branch them out into themes and that way all of your content will flow a bit better. Also give your personal statement to a bunch of different people to read because they'll give you different insights on it. And then it's your choice. Remember, it is your choice as to which bits you tweak and which bits you don't because you will get a load of different conflicting information about what's good about your personal statement and what's not, but it just gives you something to think about and how you can improve it. And then here's the most important bit, everyone dreads this, and that is the BMAP prep. BMAP prep, six weeks, I got myself Medify and I just did loads and loads of practice. I did the past papers, I did past questions. I literally sat, I was issued in my biology lessons doing BMAP prep, it was really, really bad, but it's what I had to do to just cram and get as much practice in for my BMAT as possible. I'm not saying you should do the same, but I'm saying try and practice because that is something that really, really works. Also, just a reminder, I was applying to Oxford at this time as well. So I was really, really trying to get a top BMAT score. But remember for UCL, it's not gonna be like ridiculously high, but still it's better to do really well in your BMAT because they do use it as part of the application process. The cutoff for UCL, I believe is lower. Like I'll put up the stats over here as to what it was for this year. But overall, what I'd say about the BMAT is it's quite a practice heavy exam. Just keep practicing and keep working towards getting higher and higher scores on your mock papers. If you're struggling on a particular section, work harder on that, talk to your friends, use online resources on BMAT prep, and I'm sure you'll be fine. Just keep it up and keep working on it. Okay, this bit of the application process isn't talked about enough, but it's a really key part, and it's one of the most stressful, which is the waiting game. You're going to be waiting after BMAT for maybe one, two, four, five months even for an interview. And in this period, you're just gonna be more and more anxious because everyone else is gonna get interviews in this time and you're stressing, why am I not getting an interview? It becomes quite like sad almost because you're just annoyed that they're not replying to you. And all I can say is just be patient, keep working on your A-levels or whatever you're doing at school, whatever other things you've got going on, just keep focusing on those because while you wait, there is nothing in your control, just stick with it do your thing and then eventually the interview invite will come. Okay, now the interview. Now the UCL interview has recently changed. When I did it, it was online because of COVID year and it was an online panel interview. It's now changed to an in-person MMI interview. So if anyone's done the UCL MMI interview, like please give a, a quick like overview of it in the comments below because I don't have an experience of that. Now in terms of my panel interview experience, it was really nice. The interviewers were really kind. They asked me questions. They asked me about my life generally. It didn't feel as daunting as like the Oxbridge interviews feel where you're really like grilled on the spot about random stuff. This was a bit more chill, like what are you interested in? Uh, tell me about this. Tell me about time about, you know, when you showed resilience. That's not the actual question. Like this is just examples. Why medicine is just a common thing that's asked in pretty much every medicine interview. So you should probably be prepared for that. Just generally the experience was just quite welcoming and chill. And then 25 minutes later, the interview was done. Did I think I'd get in? I wasn't sure because you can never tell. Um, and this interview I sat after not getting into Oxford where the interview went okay as well. So I didn't want to read into it too much. So after my interview, I just tried to forget about it, move on and focus on my A-levels. Okay, so now for A-levels, it was just the final push. I had to do loads of past papers, practice questions, same thing as year 12 for year 13, but it's so much harder and so much longer because there's literally double the amount of content to do. Also, all of my offers were A star AA, so I didn't have an insurance, so I had to make sure I got A star AA. So I went into the exam, like I wanted to get three A stars and that was the aim, but I was like, in case I don't, I can still get A star AA and still get in. So just have a mindset of like, I want to do as well as I possibly can, because why would you not? But remember that your grade isn't going to be a triple A star offer. So like, don't stress about it because a lot of med applicants are per like perfectionists and we want to do really, really, really well, but don't worry about it too much. So that's it. That was my whole journey into UCL medicine. If you're interested in like my whole stats page and how I got in, what dates I got offers and stuff, I'll leave it over here. Just like have a quick look at it. Um, this is everything I got. Okay, so that's it. That is my full journey into UCL medicine. So I hope that helped to some extent. Um, here's a few other videos that you may want to watch um, if you're interested in UCL content. And otherwise, have a lovely day. Subscribe and see you later.